So now, all the presentation, this presentation is actually just to provide um, uh, general information and actually to give you some form of um, visualization and education on how to use CFDs. And like every other investment, um, it comes with investment risk. And CFD being a leveraged product, um, you might sustain loss um, exceeding your initial funds that you place in our company. So wherever you are in doubt, um, please always seek advice, um, additional advice from a qualified financial advisor. And um, CFD may not be suitable if, if your risk tolerance is low or right now your investment objective is actually to preserve your capital. So you advise again to actually go to our website to look through our dis, uh, risk disclosure statements. So let's, let, let's look into the basics of what is actually a CFD. A CFD is a short, a short form for um, contracts for difference and it's actually a derivative product that allows you to trade a price movement of the underlying asset. So um, some of the popular assets they are we are looking at for CFDs would be shares and the growing uh, interest in actually is uh, indices. So it's the value of this CFD is actually um, derived or get from the underlying assets which is shares or indices and you do, when you, you when you are invested in uh, CFDs you actually do not own the shares of the company or the baskets of the company in, 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 if you're talking about indices. So right now it's actually, it's actually simply put a contractual agreement between two parties and looking at this picture right here, we're actually between the broken house is my company and the client and as you, meant, as, as you say, it's a difference, we actually meant a difference between the closing and opening price at the close of the contract. So why do we want to use um, CFDs to, as part of your trading strategies if you have one? Um, it's actually to, you, you're able to actually to short sell um, conveniently. Um, you don't have to, if you're talking about shares, you don't have to worry about buyback or even borrowing shares. You just click to sell. Um, you can have flexible trading strategies where um, CFDs also gives, gives out um, corporate actions such as dividends. So you're you are able to actually have different multiple forms of trading strategies besides the conventional um, buy and hold strategy. Uh, you also provide a bigger bank to your uh, investment capital because it's able to give you a leverage of 20 times. Uh, and having said 20 times leverage means that um, you're able to only require a 5% margin if you were to invest in index um, CFDs. So the calculation for any gross profit or losses is very simple. Um, you just take the closing price upon the closure of your position, um, minusing of the opening price, and and you just multiply with the value of one point of the particular indices you are, you are trading, and um, the number of quantity. So let's zoom into the the important part of this presentation, um, what are uh, world indices. So before I dive deeper into the presentation, um, what does an index uh, mean to an, an investor? So when you look, in, when you look at a, a particular index, let's say the Straits Times Index, the Hang Seng Index, um, the S&P 500 Index, um, what does it really mean to an investor. It's actually a compilation of stocks constructed in a manner um, that it tracks a performance of a certain market, sector, uh, commodity or even other asset classes. And if you look if you look into this morning and you know that Dow Jones has actually gone up by 150 points it actually provides a macro view for investors to tell you to, to, to tell us that actually um, that the US market actually is in the bullish um, it's actually uh, investors are actually going are looking into the US market so it actually provides a, a numerical figure to give an indication to investors 
um, how the particular market is performing. So some of the features about the World Indices CFDs is that you're able to gain exposure to the market movement of the underlying indices. Now, if you look at um, the the Wall Street, I mean, no, the the Dow Jones Index, you know that the indices are the index is going up. However, it's just only an indicator. Um, you cannot actually really trade uh, Dow Jones Index. So what we do is actually we use we allow clients to trade the Dow Jones Index by using CFDs. So this is what I mean by you're able to gain exposure to market movement of the underlying indices. And um, the next will be you have a leverage up of 20 times, which means that uh, we only require a 5% margin to have exposure to the whole um, 30 stocks of Dow Jones or even the whole basket of stocks for the straight stuff index. And uh, besides your conventional whole buy and hold uh, strategy, you're able to actually uh, short sell the index um, and then you buy back cheaper. So the, uh, a remiser once told me that uh, most of his clients are actually not really performing well in terms of the market because they only have one trading strategy which is just to buy and hold and pray that the market goes up. But um, during uh, a crisis, uh, you know, clients wouldn't want to to liquidate their position if they really think that stocks they have is 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 um, is actually going to appreciate it in the long run. Um, you can actually use this word in word in this CFD to actually um, hedge the existing portfolio that you have. Likewise, um, there's no expiry for word in this CFDs. Uh, unlike futures, if you were to buy a uh, index futures index um, for Asian market you actually have to roll over every month and that will incur um, transactional costs uh, options and warrants um, likewise you have to find a suitable warrant um, if you want to sell a certain index you have to look for a suitable put warrant to actually uh, to implement your your trading views And all these three asset classes are the futures, the options, and the warrants. They do not cater for, I believe they do not cater for corporate actions such as uh, dividends. Uh, we, for index CFDs, uh, we do give out dividends should the component stocks or the baskets of stocks that is tracking um, uh, gives out dividends. Which this will be covered in the later slides on how do, you, how do, do we uh, compute dividends to be given out if you were to to be uh, traded in in one of the if any of the CFDs, and um, this allow clients actually to go into a, a small contract sizes of one. So, what are the kinds of world indices that uh, that my company or my desk is actually providing for clients? There are two kinds. Um, we have the cash derived index CFDs and we have the cash correlating CFDs. So what do we mean by cash derived CFDs? Uh, the only one that we have, the, the only index CFD that is cash derived is actually our straight stamps index, uh, $5 CFDs. Now this is actually, we are actually quoting prices off um, these straight stamps index CFDs. If you log into um, your trading account and you see the STI, um, at 3,280 uh, 3, today, for example, this is this is the live price that we are getting from, and we are actually quoting from that um, figure that you see on your on 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 your uh, trading platform. Um, and for cash correlating index CFDs, um, we're actually trying to we actually create a index that is tracking very closely to the indices that you see on your the live indices live live CFDs that you see on your on, on let's say for example your trading platform on TV as well. So uh, let me dive into deeper to explain the two differences. So a uh, cash derived index CFDs um, which I mentioned before which is a straight times index CFD five dollars it's actually the codes are actually based on the STI index that, that is that is uh, on your platform. Um, so like I mentioned before, STI is just only indicating.
data, um, you actually couldn't really trade because there's no really pool of buyers and sellers. So what we do is actually we create a, a spread uh, between uh, a, a, a for 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 the index, and that's where you can actually trade life indices, the life index, the life uh, STI index. So what do I mean by a three points, three point six point spread here? Let's say for example on your on your or on Bloomberg on TV, uh, you see the SDI is actually doing uh, to be three thousand hundred and fifteen, and uh, we round it up to um, to national round it up to three one one five point six, and then we'll do a spread of one point eight down and one point eight up, and give you a bid and ask price. Well, the rest of the indices that we provide are actually cash correlating, which means that uh, it's supposed to mimic uh, some of the cash indices that you see. Um, here are the list that you have. We have the the Wall Street uh, index CFDs, um, which actually trying to mimic the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. The uh, US SP 500 is actually trying to mimic the um, uh, the S and P 500 indices. So if you have actually concerns whether uh, our cash call rating, cash call rating world indices um, is not uh, tracking well to the the cash index that you see on your trading platform, um, you can see that actually the comparison here right now that is uh, on this graph is that our our white colored um, US S and P uh, SP 500 index. It's actually tracking very closely to the trend of the S and P 500. So um, just to just to just to to highlight that uh, our cash call rating world indices, uh, they don't usually usually track point to point, but they are tracking um, the trend. So likewise for let's say for example H shares, when you want to trade the um, the the China market. You can see that here we are actually tracking very closely to the trend of the the, the cash market. So, um, who would want to trade um, the world indices CFDs? So, traders and investors who want to to trade just based on economical news, um, on like um, central banks rumors. Uh, without having the need to stock pick, um, and they want to just trade the macro view of a certain country, um, then they will want to. We, we would like to trade the world in the CFDs. Um, I mentioned before, if you want to hedge uh, against market sentiment without um, liquidating your existing portfolio, you can actually use it. Use these um, CFDs to actually uh, provide a hedge for you. And if you want to trade a instrument that do not have expiry, where you don't want to actually incur more transactional costs by keep rolling over in the futures market, um, World in CFDs is the is the product for you. Likewise, you know if you trade futures, you do not get dividends. Um, CFDs will actually cater for dividends. So in summary, uh, World Indices CFD is actually a form of CFD to allow clients to trade the underlying index. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, the cash correlating index CFDs, they are actually tracking the level of the index and the trend of the index and it may not tra tra uh, track point to point of the cash index. And I'd like to highlight that our straight sales index CFDs is the um, one of the hot sellers in, in Philips CFD right now, and we are the first provider to provide this uh, um, cash index. So let me dive into one of the contract specification and how do you read, uh, read the, in the, the names of the indices and um, you know, to, you, you, at least you know what you are trading at for. So let's say for example, you look at I would, you log into a trading platform and you see this, uh, the name of this index, Hong Kong 40 at Hong Kong $5 index CFDs. So Hong Kong 40 will just tell you that which market you are actually looking at and um, it's supposed to track uh, which uh, index 
So Hong Kong 40 will actually be tracking the Hang Seng and every point of the every point of the index would be five Hong Kong dollars. So how do you know the contract size would be actually taking the price of the index times five Hong Kong dollars times the number of contract that you want to trade. So this is how you derive the contract size. So some of the specs here is that um, for straight stops index CFD, uh, straight time index five dollar CFDs, we only require a five percent margin. You start trading at 9.01 and you end about 4.59 p.m. So the spread is that cap at 3.6 points and here, let's say for example, 3,008 again, um, it will give you a bid at ask price. So here you are saying that a 5% margin, how do, you, how, do you, how do you know how much do you need to put in? to trade the whole basket of uh, 30 stocks for STI will actually be calculated as below. Let's say for example, um, the STI is now doing 3,000 points at $5 per point and you were to go in at one contract, the contract size would be 15,000 and 5% of that you only require $750 to gain the exposure for all the, all the component stocks for STI. So the golden rule, um, how do you trade this is that um, if you want to buy, you click on the ask and if you want to sell to liquidate or close off your position, you click on the bid. Now the, some of the cash correlating indices will be our um, Singapore index uh, at $20. Uh, we, kept our, we try to keep our spread as tight as 0 0.3 points and um, the margin requirement is also 5%. This is one of the hot sellers for um, for our desk would actually be the Wall Street um, cash index. It's actually uh, one dollar per point. We fix our point spread to be four points, and the margin income is at five five percent as well as well. So S and P five hundred, um, which is which is actually the cash quality thing would be actually be the S P five hundred. Uh, it's actually five dollars per point, uh, target spread at 0 0.5, margin requirements at five percent. Likewise for US Tech 100 is actually five dollars per point, we keep our spread at one point, however the margin requirement is higher um, due to the Apple uh, exposure, uh, its margin requirement is 20 percent. The Russell 2000, um, this is actually to uh, 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 an uh, index that is heavily weighted at ten dollars. Um, the spread was a cap at zero point five. Likewise, the margin requirement is twenty percent. So let let's dive into the corporate action. Um, how when you have a world index CFDs, uh, and if should the component stocks of that particular index is giving out dividend, uh, how much would you get back in return? So let's say if you go to long a world index CFDs, you're actually receiving cash and if you were short, um, you have to pay out the cash adjustment. So how step one is we, we need to calculate the number of shares is through, is through the following um, um, formula. When you take the quantity of contract that you have um, times the settlement price of the particular day times the value of the index point the times the stock weighting, let's say for example DPS has a heavier stock weighting and also divided by certain price of certain stocks. So this will actually tell you um, with one, one world index CFD is equivalent to, to how many um, shares that you have for DPS. So with the number of shares, equivalent number of shares as for the underlying stocks, you times the dividend issue. So this is how we pay out or how we deduct uh, for dividends. Not all the indices we are actually um, giving, out, giving out indices. Uh, the following um, indices are actually giving out. The one that is missing is actually uh, the Russell 2000. We do not cater um, dividends for that. I have a question about the logic on trading indices as opposed to individual stocks. 
So we have um, one audience member who was asking that you know safety is overage on Wilma. Can he should he trade Wilma to CFD or is it better to to do the index index? Uh, answer to that question is actually if you have been trading Wilma for uh, a long time and if you you are so-called um, understanding the you understood the behavior of Wilma and, and um, you can actually use um, our stocks CFD which means the Wilma CFD stocks to actually trade on the individual um, component so let's say if however for indices you if you were to have a a, a, a more macro view of how um, Singapore would perform then you actually could use um, you could actually trade um, the word index CFDs. I'm not sure if I answered um, the question. Just to paraphrase, I think what Adrian is trying to say is that if you know Wilma very well and you already have a long position on the stock side, you may want to use what is the CFD as a hedging tool to hedge up your risk. But if you or if you want to short sell Wilma, then of course CFD is the ideal tool. So it really depends on your um, strategy and um, how well you know the individual stocks, as opposed to if you do not know much about the individual stocks, then it might be better to use World Indices CFD because it's an index based on blue chips. Am I right, Adrian? Uh, yes, that's correct. So um, this following slides actually tell you um, what the question that was being posted to me is like, um, or what now I just said, um, how do you use um, word indices CFDs as a hedging tool? Should you have any um, um, position in the component stocks? For assuming, let's say the clients has actually bought one lot of Singtel, or in this case, uh, Singtel, at a certain price on the 15th of April and due to market sentiment uh, or natural disaster, the price of the stock is actually coming down. So what could the client do if such a situation? Now, if he holds, uh, if he's, this, is, this is what the calculation said, is if he bought a, a, a stock at 15.43 and then um, he sold it off at 13.24 uh, for a lot, it's actually losing $2,119. So this is what happens if clients hold, buy and hold, and they do not have a hedging tool such as the World Index in CFDs to protect their portfolio. So what World Index CFDs do is that you can actually hedge your position by selling the STI for example. And then you actually buy back cheaper. So the next, this here is the calculation where you you have you shorted the STI during a, a bearish market sentiment, uh, uh, bearish market condition. You are able to actually make a profit of one thousand four hundred and thirty-five, and back to the loss of two thousand one dollars. The thousand four is actually to actually sort of protect. Uh, the losses, unrealized losses that you have for the, the stocks holding, that you, the, the stocks portfolio that you are exposed to. And if you will say that, oh, there are other um, products in the market right now that actually could use it to, to as a hedging tool, um, here is an example where I compare to our straight stamps index CFDs to the STI um, warrants. Now looking at this, you can see that actually um, the margin requirement uh, is about the same if you were to trade the STI warrants. Um, we, what, what's warrants that is tricky is that you need to understand uh, what is theta, um, the, the time to expiry, and um, the implied volatility, um, which I, I, you have to look for a suitable strike price and uh, what's the risk free rate. But for the STI, it's pretty transparent. It's actually tracking 
point to point of the STI is very transparent. Do you know what your if, if the STI were to go down a point, our STI CIP will also go down a point. And um, it doesn't have any expiry. You are able to renew, uh, put a perpetual renewal, auto renewal function for us. Uh, for but for warrants, it actually expire one to to four months time. Then, if you compare it with the um, the STI uh, CFDs to the futures and to Simsky futures. Um, Likewise, again, you can see that the margin requirement is actually the lowest among the three products and um, is actually the most liquid among the, the three products as well. Um, looking at the spread of uh, 3.6 points for straight stuff index CFDs compared to the STF futures, which can be as wide to 6 to 30 points. And if you talk about Simsky, it could be uh, 1 to 4 point spread. Now, uh, if you're talking about commission-wise, um, it's actually the lowest among the three products as well. So here are some of the working examples on if you were to long uh, one contract of the um, straight stuff index CFDs. Let's say you bought um, the index at 2943 and then you sold off at 3173. So you can see that with the effect of um, leveraging, um, you could see that the rate of return for equi on equity is actually about 114%. However, being a leveraged product, um, sorry. Should the market, if you bought at 2943 and then if the market were to tumble, at 2704, which means you're having a loss, the, 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 the effect of a leverage would means that you're actually losing more, uh, about 171%. So um, actually, um, nearing the end of my seminar, I just want to check, um, uh, do you have any question at the moment for me? Okay, so. Just to advise, before you to start trading um, the World Interest CFDs, you should actually go through our terms and conditions, the risk disclosure set, um, statements, terms and conditions. Um, you should actually maybe sign up uh, with our tutorials to actually use our CFD trader tool to, to better execute your trades. So you can actually call our trading represent your represent trading representative or our CFD uh, desk to, to, to answer any queries that you have. Um, if not, uh, thank you for your time. Please feel free to type in any questions that you may have. We will be here for another few minutes to field any questions that you may have on more on CFD or on CFDs in general. If you would like to ask the questions via the microphone, feel free to raise up your virtual hand and we will unmute your mic as well. If there are no further questions, we'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar. Feel free to send in any further questions that you may have later to cfe at philip.com.sg. So that's philip with double L, no S. Or you can also um, go to our website, which is cfe.sg, to take a look at our further product offerings. And we have also a live chat and our uh, helpline customer service hotline over there, which you can um, call us if you have any other inquiries. So thank you for attending and we look forward to seeing you at our seminars or at our future webinars.